Hi, and welcome to part two of chapter five. Um, we we're talking about the probability rules. Uh, well, like what is an event? Why would something be mutually exclusive or disjointed? What are our addition rules? What does the U mean? What does the upside down U mean? And all of those things, that's what we're gonna cover in this particular uh, video. So. Here are the things, here are your learning objectives, what you should be able to do, um, not necessarily by the end of this video, but by the end of our in-class day regarding this, and we'll go over some questions in class. So can you describe a probability model for chance process? So this is going to be different than our simulation model, um, and so we'll learn a little bit on how to create a probability model uh, using basic probability rules. We'll understand what the complement rule is versus the addition rule. We're going to have a visual representation of both of those as well. Um, we will learn how to use, and most more than likely interpret two-way tables and Venn diagrams to model chance process. Um, we'll be able to calculate probability involving two events. And again, usually that's from a two-way table or a Venn diagram. And uh, we'll use the general addition rule to calculate probability. So again, this is a little bit more of our math portion. Um, it's not crazy math, but it is probabilities math. So let's dive on in. In our previous video, in our in our previous day in class, we did simulations where we stated, planned, uh, did, and then concluded. But um, you don't always have to rely on those simulations. You can see that they're kind of a lengthy process to set up. And so uh, you can actually do a probability model. But in order Order to do that you need two different parts you need the sample space and it's just a fancy word for um, your actual possible outcomes and then your probability model itself and that's uh, typically we represent it as like p of whatever and so that p is your uh, probability model the probability of each cow outcome and then that sample space would be that of whatever okay so if i roll two dice two six-sided die how many different possibilities are there and so this is kind of how you begin building a probability model and so here i have all th uh, all 36 possible different combinations of rolling two different die two different six-sided die so you could get a one and a one a two and a one you could get a four and a four or a three and a five etc 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 so here's all 36 possible outcomes and so this is what we call our sample space is that there are 36 possible outcomes it's not necessarily that you're dealing with all 36 outcomes but there are 36 of them so since the dice is fair uh you know they're the same size same opportunity etc etc each outcome is equally as likely so you your current probability is one out of 36. So what's the chance of rolling any outcome would be one out of 36. You guys understand that? That's kind of basic probability math, but let's move on. What if I don't just want to know um, what is the probability of rolling any combination of two dice? What if I want to know a specific combination? And so that's what we're going to kind of walk into. So a vocab definition here is an event collection of outcomes for some chance process. We typically designate these as capital letters. So you might see it as P of a, P of B. And in this particular instance, I think we're about to do an event where what would be the outcome where both of my die add up to or sum to the number five. So that would be a two and a three, a four and a one, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to write that event as A. So the sum of five is event label A. And here we go. We have a one and a four, a two and a three, a three and a two, and a four and a one. And that's just because, you know, you have the opportunity to roll a one or a four on one die and then et cetera. So you have kind of the similar outcomes, but different. Anyway, so there are four outcomes that result in this sum of five. And so then our new probability P of A, this particular event would be four out of 36. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about those events. Um, suppose of MB is defined as sum is not five. So that would be all of the remaining other probabilities. We're actually going to learn what this vocab is, is when we're talking about the events outside of it or the, the probability outside of an event, we actually uh, call this a complement. And we'll learn that vocab word in just a little bit. But um, what would be the sum is not five. And if you just said, OK, well, what's 36 minus four? You're on the right path. Um, it would be uh, 32 over 36. But the reality of it is, is you can also do one minus four over 36. And that is another definition. And that would be our uh, addition rule. It's called the addition. Uh, the complement rule, sorry, the complement rule, and that's where you take one minus the probability of the event that you're not 
supposed to be associating with. And so that's where that 36 minus 4 technically comes from, because when you subtract fractions, 1 minus 4 over 36 becomes 36 over 36 minus 4 over 36. So that's where the math comes from behind that. But here's some basic rules of probability. I'll go over each, but we'll also see the, the like kind of mathematical definition or formulas on the next slide. So the probability of any event is a number between 0 and 1. You guys know this because you talk in terms of fractions. So those would be num numbers between 0 and 1. A probability of 0 means it cannot occur. Um, and so all possible outcomes together must have probabilities whose sum is exactly 1. So if I have the probability of event A and the probability of event B and the probability of event C, if they're all dealing with the same outcome set, then they all have to sum together to be 1. If all outcomes in the sample space are equally likely, so um, somehow the probability of getting sums of ones and twos and threes and fours and fives, when we're talking about the dice um, example, were all the same. Somehow they were all the same. Then this is uh, bullet point three we're talking about. You would have this formula where the number of outcomes corresponding to event A uh, is divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So that makes sense, right? If event A and event B and event C all have the same number of um, outcomes, then couldn't we just write it as this formula? Yes, so it's just kind of a common sense thing, but we'll mention it. Um, and then the uh, bullet point four and bullet point five are dealing with our two main vocab concepts from here, and that would be the complement and the mutually exclusive. So uh, bullet point four, the probability that an event does not occur is one minus the probability that the event does occur. That's a fancy way to say what we just did. When we found the probability of what wasn't a sum of five, we took one minus event A. It's as simple as that, and that's called a complement. If two events have no outcomes in common, the probability that one or the other uh, occurs is the sum of their individual probabilities. So if we have two events that are mutually exclusive, they cannot share properties. I couldn't do a Venn diagram and have the overlap. My Venn diagrams would be separate. So um, this would be a mutually exclusive. We also call this a disjoint. So these are vocab words you may see on the AP exam, and so I'm just stressing those words that if they're talking about this, this is what they're talking about. Probability two-way tables, Venn diagrams, and, and um, mutually exclusive or independent events. So if two events have no outcomes in common, uh, then the probability that one or the other occurs is the sum of their individual probabilities can be rewritten as simply, um, you know, P of event A plus P of event B. That's basically what that's saying, and it's going to equal, you know, zero. So here they have that again that you know if they are mutually exclusive if they are disjointed then your probability in the end must be zero because the probability that they would occur together would be zero because they are mutually exclusive so let's see those same concepts summed up in actual um, notation form in our symbolic form so here it's saying that all of all probabilities occur between zero and one that's what we just talked about. Uh, the sample space uh, in a probability must be equal to one. What a concept. All probabilities all together for that particular outcome have to eventually be one. Okay, well, this is what they're saying. P of S is equal to one. In the case of equally likely outcomes, here's that formula again. And finally, we get down to the two main things, the complement rule and the addition rule for mutually exclusive. And here you can see, here's that complement rule, one minus the event I'm excluding. And then here we have our mutually exclusive that you know, if this can't deal with B and this can't deal with A, then, you know, if we add them together, we're going to get to that zero point. So let's actually do an example together. When finding probabilities involving two-way events, or sorry, two events, a two-way table can display the sample space in a way that makes probability calculations easier. Consider the example on page 309. And so this example has to do with um, the, the, the who has pierced ears. And so I've got a little image of it. If you're looking for it in your textbook while, while watching, it's this little guy right here. Uh, and so we're on page 309, but I've got all the information right here. You don't really need to um, go to the textbook unless you want to. So suppose we choose a student at random. Find the probability that the student A has pierced ears. So there's question one. B is a male with pierced ears, question two. And C is a male or has pierced ears. So there's that very important C part where we're going to do an or uh, concept. And that's where I think uh, kids might make their most mistakes. A and B make a little bit of common sense to you guys, but C might be a little bit tougher. So so, A, 
if I have pierced ears. So here we go. I go to my two-way table and I see under pierced ears that I'm looking at this category right here. Yes. Does it say anything about gender? No. So I don't care that 19 males had pierced ears or 84 females had pierced ears. I really care about this number, 103. But what is my total number? Am I dealing with 90? Again, no, we're not dealing with a specific male or a female. We're talking about all of them together. So it's going to be 103 out of 178. Pretty easy, right? And so this would be uh, and we defined our events as A is male and B has pierced ears. Just a quick note, if it was clearly defined, like let's say I was doing a free response question on the AP exam. If it was a clearly defined event, you could write, like if in the question itself it said A is defined as male and B is defined as P is pierced ears, in your answer, you could write P of B is equal to 103 over 178. But if B wasn't clearly defined, either you have to define it, B has pierced ears. Look at that. We defined our events right here. And if you don't define it, then this is another thing you could write. So you can literally write the, um, what do they call it, the vocab or the wordage or, or however you want to call it. There, there's a specific word. Hold on. Meet, 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 meet. Nope. I lost it. Yeah, I lost it. I don't remember where I read that. But um, you can write P of pierced ears, and that would be acceptable as well. That would be a definition that would be descriptive enough to get your full credit on that particular portion of the exam. So let's move on to if I am a male with pierced ears. So now we're looking at a very specific portion. We're looking at male and we're looking at, yes, I have a pierced ear. So we're actually looking at this value right here, 19. But what is our probability? Are we looking at just the males? Are we looking at the total value? And so this is where I think some kids might struggle a little bit. You might put 19 out of 90, but remember your original probability, um, it says, suppose we choose a student at random. It doesn't say choose a male student. It just wants to know that the probability of that student. So who's that student? A student out of the entire 100 the probability that that particular student is male with a pierced ear is 19 out of 178. So don't get, you know, don't, don't get lost in your own thoughts. Always reference the language that they have used so you don't accidentally put 19 out of 90. Uh, and so moving forward. Um, before we actually move on to C, I want you to see that they have written, we want to find P male and pierced ears acceptable or P A and B acceptable if the events were design, defined. So this is two ways that you can write it. And then here is our actual answer, 19 out of 78, and it's referencing P of A and B. And finally, C, if a, it is a male and has pierced ears. So this is the one that I thought we might struggle with the most. So I went ahead and showcased the answer. But we want to find male or, sorry, it's an or statement. And so we're not going to write and right here. We're going to write or, we're going to write or. But in order to do the or, we have to be very cognizant of not uh, repeating values. So I don't want to do uh, 19 plus 84 plus 19 plus 71. And where did I get those numbers? I don't want to do 103 because I'm looking for somebody who has pierced ears and 90 because I'm looking for somebody that's male. Those are the numbers that most kids might accidentally pick. Instead, I'm going to actually go in and use the values inside the categories that match. So am I male? Okay, so here are my two values, 19 and 71. And do I have pierced ears? So here are my values, 19 and 84. And do you see how I circled 19 twice? That would be the number that kids would accidentally include twice because they would have done 90 and 103. And so that's going to give you an additional 19 values. I don't want that. I only want 19, 71, and 84. Or you could have seen it as 90 plus 84. Or you could have seen it as 103 plus 71. No matter how you see it, you're not counting values twice. That's the biggest mistake that kids make there. So we end up with the probability that I could either be male or have pierced ears is 174 out of 178. That probability is much higher because it's an or state. So you have more likelihood to, you know, be in either category or both. So moving on, we can't use the addition rule for mutually exclusive events unless the events have no outcomes in common. So um, how would I know 
what's the easiest way to determine this? Well, that would be create a Venn diagram. It's as simple as that. So here's a silly little Venn diagram about dads, dogs, kids, and all the things they have together hoping for hot dogs for dinner. Uh, I thought this was a cute little Venn diagram. But anyway, um, here is our Venn diagram regarding our um, males and our pierced ears. And so here's our sample space in the green. And we're going to see this Venn diagram multiple times, but they're just kind of breaking it up for us. So outcomes in the middle are, are double counted. And so that's the one we don't want to accidentally use these values more than once. So we want to be real cautious about that 19 in the center. These are the people who have just pierced ears. So here's event B and here's event A. These are just the males. Um, and this would be the males with pierced ears. And any number outside it would be our complement. And so tech, in our particular example, that would be um, females who don't have pierced ears, right? Females who don't have pierced ears would be the only thing we haven't accounted for. And that would be that complement space. And that's that orange peachy color that I uh, colored in. So a general addition rule for the two events. So if A and B are any two events resulting from some chance process, then P of A or B must be event A plus event B minus the two uh, double counted. So the two events together. Okay. And so that would be how you deal with this uh, two events where you have something or the other. You have them mutually exclusive. So this is exclusive. This is exclusive. They don't interact with each other. Okay. So because Venn diagrams have other branches, we have those specific vocab. I've mentioned them a few different times, complement and mutually exclusive or disjointed. And so let's actually see what that looks like one more time. The complement is this is your notation for complement. So when you see this, that's what it means. It means you're dealing with the outcomes that aren't the event. And you can see it's physically the space outside of the circle. It cannot even exist inside the circle. And then the second concept is that mutually exclusive or disjointed. And here you can see they don't even share uh, a space. And so here's our sample space. Here's A, here's B. They never share anything in common. Okay. And so let's move on to um, understanding the, 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 U and the upside down U. And so this would be union and intersection. Um, they have a little, uh, way to remember it at the bottom of this slide coming up, but you know, U for union. And if you see this as an N, so you can remember this for N for intersection. So that's kind of what they're going to tell you. So the intersection of events A and B would be anything that um, occurs that are uh, occurring in A and in B together. So that's this portion right here. You guys recognize it in the Venn diagram as the overlap. Uh, and we call that the intersection. Remember N for intersection and looks like an upside down you. And then for union, this would be all e outcomes. So, you know, uh, if I had A was one, two, three, and four, and B was two, four, six, and eight. Um, and so then my um, intersection of these, so A intersects B would be uh, two and four. And then A union B would be one, two, three, four, six, and eight. So it's just kind of a more uh, numeric representation of this concept. Here is that hint again. Remember to keep your symbol straight, U for union, N for intersection. And I think this is our last slide, but um, let's uh, wrap up Venn diagrams and probability. And so this is that pierced ears concept again. And so, um, here is my Venn diagram. And let's read through each of these numbers and look at it in terms of our U for union and N for intersection. So here I've got this. And so the green would be our union or sorry, our intersection of A and B. That makes sense, right? It's where both must occur. But what if I just want the number 71? Would I just say that's A? Not quite. It's going to be A with uh with intersecting b's complement so outside circle b so it wants to know um it wants to know because uh, a wouldn't just be 71 because a was males and a is actually 90. so to get this number 71 you have to do 90 minus uh your pierced ear number so uh, what are we doing? Male and no pierced ears. Okay, so you would do 90 minus your value to get this number 71. Sorry, I had to look right here. So that would be A uh, intersection B complement. 
But what if I wanted to know the female side with pierced ears? So that would be um, B intersection A complement. And so again, where did this 84 number come from? It's doing some math to separate out those values. And finally, if I want this number right here, this would be my A complement uh, joined with my B complement, and the only number left would be four. So this is our two-way table. Here's our Venn diagram, and this is how we write it in notation. They all mean the same thing. And finally, to summarize, okay. Now, are you able to describe probability models for a chance uh, process? So, you know, can you can you write an event? Can you determine if these are mutually exclusive, et cetera, et cetera? All those kinds of things would help us with our probability models. And, you know, for the most part, can you say, you know, if I flip a coin 25 times and it's heads 14 and tails 11 times, then what's the probability of heads? Can you, know, can you describe a probability model? More than likely you can. Can you use your probability rule? So this one's a little bit tougher. It comes through more practice, which we will do in class to, uh, today. So um, this will be, um, can you, you know, use your complement? Can you use your mutually exclusive? Can you use unions? Can you use intersections? Can you interpret two-way tables and Venn diagrams? Uh, and can you, again, calculate those probabilities using your complement, your mutually exclusive, additional rules, et cetera, et cetera? And so that's kind of what we did today. Hopefully you get some practice in, and then we'll do uh, section 5.3 and dealing with independent events tomorrow.